ladies and gentlemen, once again, another another game 1-0 down and another comeback for Manchester United. A very vital win, gets us into the top four for the moment. And Manchester United against West Ham, we have a lot to discuss because not all of it is going to be positive. What's up, everybody? It's the Aiden Sports Show. Welcome back to another video. Today, we have got a Manchester United versus West Ham 3-1 match reaction, Manchester United with some brilliant world-class finishes and some individual spectacular plays managed to seal a victory over West Ham who were 100% the better team today. But sometimes, just like against PSG when we were the better team, Sometimes football just doesn't seem to work out for the teams that do play better. Before we get started in to go any further into this, please like and subscribe to the Aiden Sports Show YouTube channel. Turn notifications on. A miraculous comeback for Manchester United. But once again, not everything that I'll be discussing today is going to be a positive thing for Manchester United because there were some very, very, very concerning signs, especially in the first half of the old Manchester United or I guess the inconsistency of Manchester United. That first half performance was pretty subpar and honestly it com it competes with the levels of the Tottenham game, with the Crystal Palace game, the Brighton game. So many games that we've seen in the past, that first half resembled a lot of what we saw from that. Disgusting first half and honestly everybody would have got threes or twos if it was going to continue like that for Manchester United. Completely inexcusable to have a half like that. There's, there's fans in that crowd. There's fans that witnessed West Ham absolutely dominate us for one hour straight. And we had no retaliation until obviously an individual brilliance for Paul Pogba. Not many people had good games today. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer had to make two substitutions in the first half. Had to make three overall very early. And credit to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer for those substitutions because every single one of them had a play, made a play, got a stat in this game today. All of them involved in all three goals. So Ole Gunnar Solskjaer gets some praise. Um, there were a bit of worrying signs. That first half was dreadful and our players really let him down today and our players let themselves down today. And those player ratings are going to be very harsh because of that first half. Because yes, we did win this game 3-1. Yes, we did get three points. Yes, we are in the top four right now. But with all that being said... This game was not a convincing victory by any stretch of the means. West Ham surely would walk out of this feeling like they should have won the game. We're absolutely hard done by. At the end of the day, if West Ham can't finish, can't finish their chances, they don't deserve to win the game. That's just the way that I see it. But West Ham should have won this game today. They should have put the, 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 the chances that they had. They could have been three or four up by half time. They should have put the game to bed much earlier than what they tried to do. And we capitalized on their missed opportunities. That's how football is. Um, but 100% West Ham were the better team today. And again, it's just worrying signs for Manchester United. But three points is all that matters to me right now. The play ratings are going to be harsh. The center backs and the defense today was dreadful. The CDMs today were dreadful. And some of the attackers today were dreadful. This was not a good game by any stretch of the means. And the player ratings will reflect that, at least to my standards. And a lot of people say I'm very lenient towards these players. So at the end of the day, that's exactly what I'm going to... I'm going to go based on what I feel. A lot of these players have not done themselves any favors today. And I really think that for some of them... It's, it's getting to the point where they probably shouldn't be playing for Manchester United right now. Some of them need to get dropped, and obviously injuries did happen today. We're going to go into the play ratings, but before we do that, let's go into the goals. First goal was, obviously, it came in at the second half with the substitutions for Bruno, um, Rashford, and Mata. Um... Uh, pretty much what I remember from that goal, besides the stunning finish, was Bruno Fernandes getting the ball to able to beat a few men. Bit of patience, passes it to Paul Pogba outside the box. Paul Pogba, with absolutely stunning world-class technique, managed to fire it right into the corner. Unsavable from any goalkeeper in the world. Absolutely fantastic finish to get this game at 1-1. West Ham's goal involved another set-piece mistake, which led to their goal. Um, the second goal was a beautiful cross from Alex Tellez and a world-class touch from Mason Greenwood to get himself in the position to shoot. And it's a world-class finish. Mason Greenwood makes it 2-1. The third goal came from a stunning um, lob pass from Juan Mata to Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford chips the goalkeeper, missed a chance very early on when he was on. 
did not miss this one. 3-1 for Manchester United. Those were the goals. And beautiful plays from some of our from our goalkeeper today as well was able to get in the contribution for a goal. So let's go into the player ratings for Manchester United in goal. Dean Henderson, I'm giving a 7 out of 10, purely because he didn't have that much to do. He made a few good saves, fantastic free kick save, and ended up being part of the contribution for the, for the first goal for Manchester United. Um, World-class clearance ended up going right to the counter-attack. Again, the counter-attack starts from the back, and why, not, why can't the goalkeeper be the one to start off the counter-attack? Dean Henderson's kicking today was on point. A lot of people might give him higher than a seven, but I feel like since he had little to nothing to do besides the free kick save and the contribution to the goal, I feel like it's only necessary to give him a seven out of 10. I don't think he deserves more than that. He is in contention for me for man of the match. So um, I guess that's a good thing as well. And ultimately, I thought that he was by far one the best player in terms of the defense today, because um, we still have a lot to discuss. Obviously, the actual outfield defenders have a lot to answer for. Right back, Aaron Wambasaka. Now, Aaron Wambasaka is the only defender, in my opinion, that walks out of this game with their head held high in a defensive way. Aaron Wambasaka was far and away the best defender today. Now, he was put out of position a lot. There were many opportunities that came from his side in positional sense, but he made a miraculous um, recovery tackle to ensure that the game stayed at 1-0 very early on. He had a lot of tackles into, in, this, in this game that allowed Manchester United to get on the break. His passing was fine. I'm going to give him a 6.5 out of 10. I don't think he was at the level to get a 7. None of our defenders were. But I think he was probably the best defender on the night in terms of the defensive side. Offensively, we'll talk about Alex Hellers later because the cross was great. But Ultimately, I really have to say that Aaron Wan-Bissaka was probably the better defender out of all of our defenders today because Lindelof and Maguire were not that great, especially in the first half. Let's talk about Victor Lindelof. Victor Lindelof in the first half was extremely shaky, could not really beat his man. Again, the, uh, the way that West Ham was beating every single one of our players today, it seemed, it seemed very impossible that we were going to win this game, to be honest, with the way that they were playing in the first half. But... Um, I'm going to give Victor Lindelof a 5 out of 10. I thought he could have done a lot better today. I thought he he should. He he, he was part of the first goal as well. So, same as Harry Maguire. These centre-backs and the zonal marking issues should not even be... It's It's been three games in a row we've conceded from a corner. So... When are we going to learn? When are we going to learn? When are we going to change the way that we defend the corners? We have a big enough team. At the time, Cavani was on. Martial was on. You had Harry Maguire and Victor Lindelof. Aaron Wan-Bissaka is a decent header away from the ball. You had a lot of people. Scott McTominay, Paul Pogba. You had a lot of big players in that team to header a ball away. But somehow, some way, we're still conceding from a set piece. And I think Victor Lindelof and Harry Maguire are going to get blamed for that. I also think Harry Maguire was going to get a five. Now, I must give a little bit of a um, heads up on this. If they continued the way they were playing in the first half, I was going to give both of them twos because they were so terrible in the first half. But again, once the momentum came into play, they did very, very good things um, in the second half. Victor Lindelof was clearing a lot of things away. Harry Maguire, right place, right time, very vital tackles some of them from their own mistakes, but still made vital tackles to prevent goals from going in. Um, I'm only giving them a five because of their second half, because the first half, they were twos. They were that bad. And so was um, Alex Tellers, to be fair. Alex Tellers was not great today either. So I'm giving them fives. Uh, Harry Maguire had a decent shot on goal from very far, but that's the only highlight I could say from Harry Maguire, besides obviously had he, having some interceptions, clearing the ball away from the headers, uh, heading the ball away from some crosses and some corners. Besides that, Harry Maguire had a had an had an okay game similar to Vinci Lindelof. They just had they were just okay today, but in the first half they were dreadful. So they managed to pick themselves up from where they were in the first half. Alex Tellers. Now Alex Tellers, a man of two halves today once again. Um, the per I, I come I for the life of me do not know the player that was on him, but their their right winger absolutely tore Alex Tellers to shreds. Absolutely tore him to shreds. Again, um, Alex Tellers defensively was poor today. I don't think anyone could say with a straight face that Alex Tellers had a good defensive game today. But 
he got an assist for the second goal to take the lead. And that was a beautiful cross. And again, that's what you get from Alex Teller's world-class crossing ability. That cross was right on the margin. And yes, Mason Greenwood had to do a lot of work to get that goal. But the cross that went in allowed Mason Greenwood to get that goal. So I'm giving Alex Tellers a solid 6 out of 10. I do think he, I do think he should have been better today. And um, defensively, I expect more from Alex Tellers. But offensively, this is exactly what you expect from Alex Tellers. To whip in a ball. He had a good few couple of crosses in this game today. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm going to say for Alex Tellers. Hopefully people agree with me with that. Again, I'm not sure how people are going to rate this. I feel like people are going to um, give Paul Pogba a lot of praise for his second half performance and the goal. But Paul Pogba wasn't that great today either. And it's just one of those games, man. It's just one of those games where you just look at the team, you look at the players, and you know that they didn't play good. But somehow you're giving them okay ratings because of the way that they won the game today. Let's go into the CDM positions. First off, I'm going to start with Scott McTominay. And if I have to be blunt, Scott McTominay was awful today. Um, again, when it comes to dribbling, Scott McTominay won a lot of free kicks today. A lot of free kicks today, Scott McTominay won. He was able to make dribble his way out of trouble and managed to find ways to get free kicks for this team. However, the passing today from Scott McTominay was awful. I can't remember a single forward pass that he made today that actually went through. And again, I understand trying stuff is something that should be very um, should be attempted for Manchester United. Of course, every single time that you try to go for a through ball or a lob pass, you're doing it for the intention to score a goal. He did have a shot on goal today. I just thought in the game he wasn't that relevant, and when he did have the ball and he was able to make passes, he was turning the ball over. So I think Scott McTominay was probably one of the worst of players on the pitch today. I'm going to give him a four out of ten. Um, that could be very harsh. I, again, I don't know how people are going to rate Scott McTominay. I think when it comes to energy, he's definitely one of the best players on the team in this sort of energy. He won probably the most free kicks today out of every player on the team. But once, the, once he got the ball and he was trying to make a pass, so many poor passes, especially in the first half today from Scott McTominay. I think he was the key reason why we were... We were as bad as we were because the CDMs today were non-existent in terms of the first half for Manchester United and Paul Pogba doesn't escape that easily as well now Paul Pogba uh, once again a world-class finish and in the second half he came alive he truly did in the first half Paul Pogba was terrible was terrible was stuck in possession lost the ball so easily lackluster passing it was just, it was very, very bad. And again, Paul Pogba was one of the people that I was thinking in my mind, why isn't this guy taken off yet? Why did, why did Donny Van Der Beek come off and Paul Pogba didn't? It stunned me. I'm giving Paul Pogba a six, but I'm only giving him a six because of the goal, because that goal was so world-class. If it wasn't for that goal, he'd be getting the same score as Scott McTominay, a four out of 10, because I thought Paul Pogba was not that great in the first half. Um, but yeah. The goal was spectacular, and this is the this is the world class quality you see from Paul Pogba. The problem is, can it be consistent? I want to see consistency. Now we consistently seem to come back from games one nil down. I want to see us consistently win games without conceding goals. Um, and the CDMs today did not help that cause. The centre backs did not help that cause. So Paul Pogba is getting a six for the goal, but if you if he didn't score that goal, he's probably getting a four from me. So. That's the way that I see it today. Moving on into the camp position, Donny van der Beek. I feel very sorry for Donny van der Beek. Um, I thought when he was on the ball, he was absolutely class today. But outside of that, the team had little to no effort to try and give him the ball. Anytime they did give him the ball, Scott McTominay wasn't passing it to him and passing it to the centre-backs of the other team. Paul Pogba could have managed to find him. No centre-backs could have managed to find him. Fantastic areas Donny van der Beek was putting himself in, creating a real threat in terms of being in the right places for Manchester United. Great one-touch football once again. I'm not going to go as far to give him a seven because, again, the ball very, very rarely found him today. I'm going to give him a six, but it's a six, in my opinion, that he should still be playing for Manchester United. Donny Van Der Beek should be in that CDM position for Manchester United in the next game against RP Leipzig. He, they took him off at half-time. Again, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer still just decides to not trust this player. Today it works out because the substitutions he made, all of them made the difference. So I'm not going to go and accuse Ole Gunnar Solskjaer of making the, raw, the wrong tactical substitutions, even though at the time I thought they were very wrong. But 
he proved that to be right. But Donny van de Beek should be playing in the next game against RP Leipzig. He should be starting in the CDM position where Fred should be. Unfortunately, he is not from the red card. And I want to see more energy. I want to see him play more because he was consistently good today once again. And he's been good for a long time. But we just don't seem to give him the minutes to show how good he can be for this team and how consistent he is with this team. Moving on into the attackers. Let's go to the... Um, who was the right winger today? Mason Greenwood. Uh, first off, we'll go to Anthony Martial because he got substituted and Cavani. Um, Anthony Martial was definitely the worst player on the pitch today. Not necessarily all he's doing, but he was man-marked out of that game hardcore. Definitely man-marked out of the game. They targeted Anthony Martial. Anytime he had the ball, there was always a player ready to take the ball off him. And he didn't have causes by being so predictable in the way that he was getting the ball. It was always with his, with his back behind, trying to spin a player. Not many times did you see Anthony Martial run past a defender or try to go behind the line. It was more of get the ball behind... The, behind um, get the ball onto his back, try and hold it up and make a play. And Martial, many, many times, nine times out of 10, he would be fantastic at that. But today, he was piss poor at that. Every single time he got the ball, it was either well defended, didn't even get the ball, or when he gets the ball, he spins and he runs into a player. So just a very lackluster game from Anthony Martial. And I have to be fair, if we lost that game, Martial would be getting stinkers from a lot of people. Threes and twos out of ten. So I'm not going to be shy away from that. Martial is a great player. I still think that he should continually be playing for Manchester United. I still think he offers more positives than he does negatives for us. But today was not his game. And today he does need some criticism. Just as he did beforehand. At the beginning of the game. In the pre-show even. In the, pre, in the predictions. I gave him criticism. And today. Criticism continues to be. A thing for Anthony Martial. I'm giving him a 3 out of 10. Because he was the worst player on the pitch today. By far. You just can't hide from these things. I, I rate Martial. I think he'll be a fantastic player for Manchester United going forward. I think he's been a great Manchester United player in the past. And I think just now. He's going through a very tough patch. And I just hope that sooner or later. He can get himself out of it. Otherwise will be in more trouble in the future. Um, Edison Cavani. I'm giving Edison Cavani a five, and it's not his fault at all. Little to no service for Manchester United. None of our players decided to give him the ball at all. I actually can't remember a single time Matt Edison Cavani got a, a touch anywhere near the box. The only times I saw Cavani get touches was out from the left wing. So... We need, to, we need to be a different team when Cavani plays. We cannot be a counter-attacking team with Edison Cavani as a pure number nine. It doesn't work. We need to create opportunities for this guy. And we saw what happens when he gets opportunities. He tends to tuck them away more often than not. Southampton was a prime example. Two goals from opportunities created to him. The more opportunities that come his way, more likely the more goals that we're going to score. In any sort of scenario, Champions League, Carabao Cup, FA Cup, Premier League, this guy is a good enough striker to tuck opportunities away when they're presented to him. Um, I, wish he could, I, I wish he could create his own shot a lot, but most number nines require service. And so does Edison Cavani, and we need to give him that service. Um, and we move on. He got taken off at halftime as well. Uh, so, yeah, not really much to say in terms of that. Mason Greenwood. I'm giving Mason Greenwood a 6 out of 10 because I thought outside of the world-class goal, Mason Greenwood was very, very bad today. But once again, when you end up getting a contribution, you seem to find your way to getting an average in score, if not higher. I thought Mason Greenwood's touch for that goal was sensational. The shot with that goal was sensational. He's a very confident guy. Even if you, even when he's in low confidence and it looks like he's having a bit of a hard time, to score a goal like that when you're out of confidence, it just shows the character that he has. He obviously has an eye for goal. We all know the superstar potential inside of Mason Greenwood. And today, he had a fantastic goal to prove that he's still the real deal for Manchester United and he should not be ignored in our selections. Now, we've probably got a big game against RP Leipzig that Martial will not be playing. And Mason Greenwood might have to take the reins in that game. And hopefully he can make something happen in that game. Because again, when it comes to the holds up play, not really there. When it comes to actually existing in the game, he didn't do that much. But once 
He played down the middle, he came alive, and he scored a goal. So that's something to take into consideration going into the next game against RP Leipzig, where most likely Martial probably won't be playing that game due to a groin injury. And uh, that's the team. Now, he made three substitutions. Two of them came at halftime. And my man of the match is actually one of the substitutions that came on well after halftime. Let's start off, first off, actually, no, he came on at halftime. My apologies. Let's start off with Bruno Fernandes. Now, when Bruno Fernandes and, and Marcus Rashford came on, things changed. Bruno Fernandes, in a very small amount of time, managed to get an assist. And once again, he, he's the difference maker, isn't he? I'm going to give Bruno Fernandes a 7 out of 10. I thought he was sensational today. He came on. He did the right things. He caused so much trouble. He should have had two assists. Probably could have had a goal as well. He should have... He probably could have got easily man of the match. Now, my man of the match isn't Bruno Fernandes because I thought there was someone that was just a little bit better than him today. But... The fact of the matter is, getting a an assist in that amount of time, once again showing just how good he is, and he's putting the Premier League on notice, as he has been one of the best Premier League players, if not the best Premier League player so far this season. And granted, we've not had that great of a season so far, but we're in the top four right now. And Bruno Fernandes has what? He has about nine goals and six assists. In a, in a very, very quick succession, I think he's been fantastic. And today was just another assist to add to his stats. And it was a fantastic assist at that to a world-class goal. I'm giving him a 7 out of 10. Marcus Rashford. Now, Marcus Rashford, in my opinion, was the man of the match today for me personally. Marcus Rashford came into that game and looked absolutely insanely good. Now, he could have had two goals today. Um, unfortunately not meant to be. He had one goal. He made fantastic runs. He made the defenders on that side look silly. He managed to beat people with skill. Marcus Rashford today, I think, is the best Marcus Rashford that I've seen in, in a very long time. And yes, he has some goals to prove that, yeah, he's been good this season. He has been good this season. He's been fantastic this season. But this Marcus Rashford, from what I saw off the bench... I saw some fantastic things out of him. I'm giving him an 8 out of 10. Yes, he got a goal. The goal was put to him on a plate, to be honest, from a beautiful pass from one matter. But the fact of the matter is, outside of just that goal alone, I thought Marcus Rashford was far and away the best player on the pitch today. And he caused the most trouble for this team. And I think without him playing, we probably would have lost that game. So fair play to Marcus Rashford. And of course, one matter, the third substitution, a substitution I didn't like, but I thought was necessary because Martial came out injured. But he made a, he made the key difference, a beautiful long pass from the right wing to Marcus Rashford, very, very, very much on side as well. Tucked it away, great goal for Marcus Rashford and a beautiful pass from one matter. I thought one matter gets a seven out of ten just because of how beautiful that pass is. One matter has always class in his foot. He's a brilliant, brilliant player. Um, I would like to see, honestly, if I'm going to see one matter play, I want to see him play as the number 10. If we're going to rest Bruno Tenet, I was going to be very much fine with playing Donny van der Beek and one matter in the midfield instead of maybe uh, a McTominay or a Pogba. I was going to be very happy with that. But again, he played on the right wing. He did get an assist, but I don't like him on the right wing, and I'll keep on saying it. But today, I cannot simple, I simply cannot complain. I'm giving him a 7. Now, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer... With Oli, I'm going to give him a very good 7 out of 10 because when the substitutions first came, I thought Oli Gunnar Solskjaer has done a madness. How is he playing? How is he dropping Donny van der Beek within one half when he's been our best midfielder? Why are you dropping? Why are you bringing on Bruno Fernandes and not? and taking off Cavani because Cavani would surely benefit off of a player like Bruno Fernandes. Why are you taking Cavani off? But all those things, all those questions that were asked, he answered. He answered them and they were the right answers for today. And those answers got us the victory. Those individual performances from Rashford, Bruno and Mata being involved in all three goals made the difference today. Oli's substitutions made the difference. And that is the title of this video. So fair play to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. 
Very, very questionable substitutions, but they worked on the night. And you simply cannot ignore what works. So next game is against RP Leipzig, Champions League game. The best, most important game of the season for Manchester United. This will determine the Champions League or the Europa League. This will end up defining our season or ruining our season. We have it all to play for for Manchester United. A win would surely top us the group, I'm pretty sure. But I think the main thing is we have to get out of this group. If that's a draw, then it's a draw. If it's a win, it's a win. We cannot lose this game. Hopefully, Manchester United will not let us down. Again, there's always going to be nervous, man. I'm, this is probably going to be the most nervous I've been all season. Manchester United simply cannot let us down, and I hope to see us thrive in that game. Then we've got the Manchester Derby. Manchester Derby is always a tough game. And again, we'll be talking about that when that comes around in a week's time. But oh my goodness, Manchester City are only a point behind us. They sit in fifth right now. Obviously, you expect a team like Man City to climb into second place sooner or later. Um, but hopefully we can get a, a, a result there too. Anyway, I'm leaving it here. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're new to the Aiden Sports Show YouTube channel. Turn notifications on. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the game. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the Manchester United versus RP Leipzig match predictions video for the Champions League. It's all or nothing. It's Champions League or Europa League. What are Manchester United going to choose and how are they going to fight to make sure that they make the right decision? And that is obviously the Champions League. That is the group stages. That's the round of 16. And we're going to be versing some of the best teams in the world if we can manage to get there. It's not going to be easy. Leipzig are a great team, but this is our time and we should not shy away from the Champions League this season. Have a wonderful and safe day. I'll see you in another Manchester United video. Take care.